first got involved in art just as a child. I was always drawing, coloring, a lot of abstractions and far out stuff. I was a 60s, 70s child. <laughs> um, and then I decided to major in art when I went to school. Sure, um, the process I follow for drawing silhouettes is freehand with an X-Acto knife. And the reason for that is because it's a two-in-one process. When I did my first silhouette 34 years ago, upon being asked by someone to create their children's silhouettes, my instinct was to draw it with a pencil and then cut it out, right? That makes sense. But I found out that that was silly because the pencil drawing looked better than my cutting because do you cut on the inside of the line, on top of the line, on the outside? But that little bit of difference makes, that little distinction makes all the difference in whether you capture the likeness. So I like contour drawing, like with pen and ink, when you're just looking and you're drawing the outline of what you see. And I thought, well, I think I should just get good at drawing freehand with a knife. Simple because I had a lady who owned a daycare center ask me to draw her silhouettes, uh, the silhouettes of her children. And so it wasn't that the medium attracted me, it was that I was asked a question. And that's when Silhouettes by Blaine took off, it was in 1984, because uh, she had me draw her children. And I decided that drawing with a knife made more sense because if I drew it with a pencil first and then tried to cut it out, the lines weren't, weren't, weren't as true to the form because do you cut on the inside or the outside of the line? So I just decided I would be better off drawing freehand because I do like to draw contour drawing with pen and ink. And so it was essentially the same technique. So the knife allows me to have a lot of more detail um, that scissors just don't allow because I cut in there and sometimes if you can see these are even little buttons. but. Um, because I'm trying to personalize my silhouettes, I like to say they're a cut above the rest <laughs> because they are more embellished. In the, and so I found that a knife does the job best for me in my style. I would have to say my VCU professors <laughs> because beyond that, I mean, of course I was taught, uh, I had taken art history courses. I'd say the one that's most relative to my art form that inspired me was Matisse, Henry Matisse, due to his paper cutouts. And they're not portraits, but, you know, I, I majored in art education. And so we needed to learn art history and a lot of things, psychology and teaching skills and so forth. But the mediums, um, the professional artist that I admire is, is probably Henry Mo Monet is my favorite because I... I'm a pastel portrait, a pastel artist, and that softness uh, in Matisse's, I mean, in uh, Monet's work, I, I really love. Um, but uh, it's not what I do the most. Pastels, I used to draw um, portraits. But Henry Matisse was probably the closest that um, relate to the flatness of shapes, but yet the forms of the colors and the uh, juxtaposition of shapes against one another, They're, how they play on each other. And so I'd say Matisse. I, th I do have advice for aspiring, aspiring artists. Uh, I actually addressed that very topic as a keynote speaker at Goochland High School um, at the National Art, um, Art Society. They're in induction, I guess. Oh, Art, right. Art Honor Society. Art Honor Society, that's the and i think the parents enjoyed the fact that i would address what concerns them and when they are paying for their child's education in the arts um, because of that stigma of being becoming a starving artist so my parents taught me the same thing they said sure we'll pay for your college education but um you know, we, th we think it's best if you take some secretarial courses in high school, just so you'll have that skill set. Well, I was a bit resentful because I wanted to take art classes, but I it didn't stop me from self-learning in high school, and it did help me to get into VCU. But um, I would give them the advice to have a backup plan. 
always have a backup plan. Even have a backup plan to your backup plan. Because um, I've been an entrepreneur most of my career, and I mean, I've taught in public and private sectors, and, and my own business, Art a la Carte, is, uh, was largely about art education. But I had to do other things in the off seasons to supplement my income. I supplemented my income uh, in various ways throughout the past 30, 40 years. And, and I would say to an aspiring artist to be prepared to supplement. Not that it would mean that you ended up having to supplement. You might be very successful at your career. And there are art careers that offer, companies that offer full-time jobs with benefits. So artists are employed by companies for sure. But if, you're going, if you want to be independently employed, I, I would suggest supplementing. But also aspire to greater things just in case you could get there before your time's up. The future holds for me a continuation, first of all, of silhouette portraits. And um, since COVID and events have been canceled, I uh, have formed a website so that people can send profile photos and then uh, I will receive those images and draw them. And I tell you the truth, it's, it's a lot easier on both families and myself because the subject is still, I make up the clothing. They don't even have to be dressed up. Um, but beyond that, I have uh, outside interests since I'm no longer teaching art. Um, I aspire to represent other artists. And I would like to kind of connect the dots, if you will, between the business owner, homeowner, who's lurking, looking for um, a custom made work of art, or so they have a vision of what they want and they just don't know how to find a local artist. They'd like to support local artists. And so, and since I'm passionate about meeting local artists and what they do and how they network and we help each other, I feel like that would be the direction. I direct folks to visit my Facebook business page if they'd like to see a lot of examples um, because that dates back I believe 2012. Of course I started Silhouettes in 1987 but um, it went from the child care market to homes parties to events at children's clothing stores and that sort of thing. Even private appointments but now with COVID, it just seems so logical to operate online. So I direct people to the Facebook business page, Silhouettes by Blaine, or, and or to um, actually place an order to visit my website, which is www.silhouettesbyblaine. Blaine is B-L-A-N-E. It's short for Betty Lane, but it is my stage name, if you will, <laughs> nickname. Uh, dot com. So therefore, when you fill out the Google Doc form, you, you're pretty much led into how do I proceed, you know, so they understand what their options are, the prices are on there, and they just fill out an order form. And then I will receive those photos either from the order form or to my email address. So then I confirm receipt of the profile photos ask any questions, and then we finalize the order, I send an invoice, they pay Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, and nobody has to leave the home. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Works fine. Do you advertise somewhere? Or um, I still utilize referrals. Clover was my strong one. Um, I think, honestly, it's the word of mouth the people that visit people's homes and they see theirs and they find out, how can I reach Blaine? Mm -hmm. So I lean heavily on word of mouth. And it's such, let's face it, I'm just the only person here in the company. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I'm not I'm trying to do the worldwide, <laughs> even though I'm on the world wide web, I try to stay pretty local. I do travel. I have gone to, you know, Virginia Beach and Chesapeake, Norfolk. They're pretty, um, uh, much a favored clientele, I guess, because they they don't have someone in their area doing that. But uh, gosh, I've done them in Florida, and I've sold them across the nation and across overseas, but not that often. I tend to be your hometown gal. Uh, I like to operate local. People pick up their silhouettes either at Clover or they can schedule pickup 
with me and um, or they can pay to have it FedExed, which is my preferred method for shipping. I always send a photograph of the final of the silhouette image so they have a chance to proof it because uh, and, and looking at other opportunities to purchase silhouette portraits, I'm not finding that as an option. And I feel like that I would rather know that they're pleased before I ship it and then we find out later that somebody's not pleased. I always guarantee satisfaction. So if something is just not quite right, that doesn't look like my son, could you try it again? You know, it's not really about that. It might be, could you turn his nose up just a little bit? <laughs> Whatever the case may be. But I'd say nine times out of 10, they're very pleased with the first product. So um, it's the easiest way to go. My biggest thing is, do people understand what profile photo means? Because I think we use the word profile so often when we're talking about social media and resumes and so forth but profile means side view i get so many well not it doesn't happen that often most people understand but it is important that i see the side view so i can actually do the contour drawing and have it look like the child because i've tried to do the guesswork and i you know I, I don't think I'm gifted in the sixth sense that way. <laughs> so profile photos and and you could even say I like the hair on this photo but I like the dress on this one or I like the face on this one better and, and I'm like that's cool. I can work with that. 